Welcome to Jazzy Podcast, and this mini series is called Yoga for Peace with Lucy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is a very special moment. Not only because we have Lucy here, <laughs> <laughs> and、uh, she's absolutely amazing. She's my yoga teacher, and I'm so happy and honored to call you a friend. Yes. Yes, and also it's the first ever, many first today, first ever episode that's from the Jazzy Podcast doing it in person. So I'm so happy to have Lucy here. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, because it's a very special episode, so I would like <laughs> to begin with reading something that、okay. I'm currently reading. Yeah. It's、um, quotes from the Tao and very amazing, amazing reflection to what you、yeah. mentioned in the class today. Okay, beautiful. I love it. Thanks. It goes like this: If you want to become whole, let yourself be partial. If you want to become straight, let yourself be crooked. If you want to become full, let yourself be empty. If you want to be reborn, let yourself die. If you want to be given everything, give everything up. And the master. He or she doesn't display himself or herself. People can see their light, because he or she has nothing to prove,、mm. and it's because of that people can trust his or her words. Because he or she doesn't know who they are, people recognize themselves in him or her. Because she has no goal in mind. Everything she does succeeds. So. Oh, I love that! Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> glad. <laughs> Maybe obviously. So thank you all so much for watching and tuning in. And a lot of of us here in Barcelona know who Lucy is and her amazing class and amazing work, and the website newsletter as well.、Yeah. However, just for. Our audience, maybe in China or in Los Angeles,、mm -hmm. I would like for you to tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Okay. Ah,、yes. uh, lovely. Well, again, thank you, Jesse. Yes. It's、uh, really an honor to be here and to also be able to share a little bit about my whole journey and and life with yoga.、Um, so my name is Lucy.、Um, I have been practicing and teaching. For over twenty years, teaching full time for about eight years now, but my life with yoga began, yeah, wow, over twenty five years ago. And I was training to be a professional dancer at London Contemporary Dance School, and then I found yoga as my saving grace and meditation, which I think we'll talk about a bit.、Um, and now I work here in Barcelona full time at Yoga One Born Studio, and I also have my Own online classes as well. My, I guess one of my mantras is "Be your magic with a K," because I have really lived the transformative qualities of yoga, and I that's one of the pillars of my teaching is to share with you the transformative qualities of yoga, especially in this current day. I'm a mother. I have two boys. I've been married. I've suffered the death of my.、Um, The father of my children. I've been through a lot,、uh, and for this reason, I'm very, very passionate to share my life experience and how、um, practicing yoga, as I said and will constantly say, has been my saving grace, as well as many other modalities. But most of all, yoga and meditation.、Um, yeah, and I teach daily here in Barcelona, but I also love to travel and guest teach, and I also have my own unique. Teacher trainings, which are all based on self-discovery and this whole unique journey with yoga,、um, and now I'm going to be starting my own hundred-hour program. My aim is to create a three-year program, but I can only teach what I know. So as I grow, the people around me grow. So I'm delivering things very slowly in the right time, and it's feeling very organic. And I met JC in the studio, 
and uh, it's that I meet my best people where I teach. It's like I and I'm very, very. I think and not obviously the, one of the biggest pillars of my teaching is community. And generally, I I make all my friends from the community uh, of teaching. So yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much for the intro. Thank and, you. Uh, um, <clears throat> so now we're pinpoint pinpointing like exactly like what you're doing now, how you're serving the community and what gifts you're giving to the world. And however, as we in private, we chat so much about yes. the journey. Could we rewind time a little bit back to the beginning? What have, um, why you're on this journey? Of, oh. Did something happen mm -hmm. in, the, in the path? Because I realize myself and a lot of us, we there are always a reason, uh, like or a sign or a story mm -hmm. that uh, maybe you could share your story. Uh, yeah, I'll try and be as specific as possible because, and it's funny because as we were walking here today yeah. after class, I was asking you, so what was your journey? You know, this this whole awakening. It's really funny because I had a message from a good friend I haven't seen for many years, right. a French friend, and we were friends when we were like 16. And he sent me a picture that I had given him a, a Jim Morrison postcard and I'd signed oh, it back oh, yeah. with, some, with some words of okay. wisdom. Okay, nice. And I had this uh, circle that was, uh, it's like the, the circle, um, not of gratitude, but of life. You know, there's the, the right. spinning circle. Right, right, yeah. right, absolutely. This symbol. And I would always <clears throat> sign everything with that. And I think where my journey began is uh, I've always been connected to my spirituality. Mm -hmm without even being very, very conscious of it. Um, I used to love going to church. Felt I'm very connected to Christ consciousness. Nice. Mm. And uh, I was brought up by two parents who uh, met in a spiritual society. Yeah. So at the Study Society in London, and my father is still a prolific figure there and he's a meditation teacher there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they both had their life journey. So they began together sharing a spiritual spirituality and then they fell apart. But, I, you know, I think we've, we've been born in this journey. Um, but where I, I guess I woke to the tools, mm -hmm. I mean, I woke to the spirituality and how this, the tools to help you awaken your spirituality would, of, would, it would be. But when I was at dance school, right. yeah, and I was um, training to be a professional dancer and the stress of the competition I wanted to dance because I, it brought me closer to God. I know it. And because the choreography, I felt that I could express myself and be myself. And the language of the body just was was my vehicle. Although I love words and I love writing now nice. as well. So it was in dance school. We had yoga and Tai Chi. Yeah, amazing nice. Tai Chi. Wow. And then basically my father left me when I was two years old. He remarried, had two children, mm -hmm. but he left me. When I was four years old and I had no contact, no birthday cards, no nothing mm -hmm. until I was 18 and he wanted to reunite with me mm -hmm. and I was at dance school and with that reuniting triggered everything that I needed to heal from the abandonment of my father. Mm -hmm. I am not enough. Being at dance school, you always feel like you're not enough. Right. Right. So all of that and I got, uh, I suffered from obviously anorexia um, and I found Louise Hay. Right. Louise Hay is incredible for affirmation right. work. Um, my, really, really quick, Lucy, yeah. like you went to the bookstore one day where one of your friends gave you... Oh, the, Louise Hay? Yeah, yeah. I do not know how, where that right. book, How to Heal Your Life. I, just, I think maybe even my mother gave it to me. Okay, okay. Maybe. Right. I would like to know who gave me that book. You're right. 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 And, but with that book... Yeah, because this is, these are like, a, you know, these are almost like coincidence and that that, yeah. that that really just maybe something happened that just pushed your life on on a different you know totally different path yeah i think yeah. it's but i think as well yeah. i went to hypnotherapist uh okay. hypnotherapy when i had um when i had anorexia okay. my mom was giving me reiki because my mom's right. always been connected with okay. her spirituality wow, wow. my father and i think it was probably from my mother because we would do louise hay meditations together oh wow incredible yeah so because of anorexia um and because of the stresses of the competition of dance school, I found how yoga was my saving grace in the sense where I didn't need to compete. And I started to connect with uh, my body. I was doing meditation that my dad was introducing me to. 
I read the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. Mm -hmm. And I was practicing the Louise Hay affirmations. Right. At a very early age, I was very conscious that I could heal myself. And I also um, always questioned, why do we get ill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe it was just that the body just got ill. I knew illness is coming from somewhere. When I read Louise Hay, it all made sense. Yeah. It all just made sense. And yoga made sense to me. And Tai Chi made sense to me. And as soon as I started meditating, every day I go to dance school and I started to perform in the way I wanted to. I started to feel my body in the right way. I started to accept the things I couldn't do, the things I could do. And I just, yeah, the journey began. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's mm. incredible. Hey, um, yeah, people's stories are wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also earlier, when I was sharing my journey, there's one uh, actually extremely important part that, that it, for some reason, didn't cross my mind. But when I first moved to Los Angeles, I was exploring a different area part of town. Yeah. I was staying in this Airbnb in Venice, and uh, this amazing Indian um, lady, yeah. and she gave me, um, actually, ah. here, she gave, she, she you gave, me she gave me the autobiography of Yogi. Ah. And then this is like the, this is like the Indian version because the one in yeah. America has, uh, it's, it's like orange looking. Yes. And she, and she literally, and she literally signed here. Wow. She says, do what you love and love what you do. A uh, lot of love, lots of love, Mita. And, uh, yeah, that yeah. Ch- changed my life. Like, and then, yeah. And this is the thing. It's like when we awaken and this is why for me teaching is so important because i know one thing i say in class that day could have the potential to change the direction in someone's life or just by giving somebody a moment of connection could help them dramatically on their healing path you know and to be awake to your own potential to be of service to others is Really, a lot of the reason why we're here. Absolutely. And Absolutely. a pivot, to, like a pillar of my teaching. Yeah, for yes. sure. That's yes. wonderful. I love yes. that. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And um, again, when we were chatting, you mentioned that life, your life path, like took you to India yeah. as well, right? Yeah. How long were you there? I was there yeah. the first time just for six months, but okay. it was a life changing right. experience. But you know, the beauty of as you get older and you look at your life journey, you're like, everything happened for a reason like it's all planned out for you and your evolution if you choose to be open to listen to trust that the universe is speaking to you because if our minds are too busy and closed we're not able to open and i really thank so much that i'm so grateful for those yoga classes i had at dance school and for the Tai Chi, where I was able mm-hmm. to just stop, and my dad's guidance for meditation to just stop and observe, because it was key to me then being opening to the other things. So I went to India, yeah, when I was twenty-four, right. and I was a mummy. Yeah, I had a baby <laughs> very early, six-month-old yeah. baby. Wow. I was with uh, my partner then, um, and he we went to india to study yoga right because i got pregnant and he had been in india before right but and he crazily thought i could have the baby there and i was like no look i've never been to india yeah, yeah, yeah. i love your adventure <laughs> your adventurous um way yeah but let's go when the baby's strong and born um so but in retrospect taking a six month old baby as a That's first time awesome. mama Wow. was quite huge yeah 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 and it was incredible we went to the south of india at mm-hmm. the time the shivananda <clears throat> ashram wouldn't take us because we had a baby at that time i'm sure now it's a lot better i mean more open so mm-hmm. we found a private private teacher who mm-hmm. taught us to be yoga teachers mm-hmm. and he gave us a woman in the village who took care of his kids and we left dali with the with the nanny with the woman in the village who mm-hmm. looked after all the kids in the village wow. oh my god Wow, wow, wow. They had nothing and they wanted to give us their fridge and their bed because we had it. We rented a house, but there was nothing inside. <laughs> but you know, unfurnished it, apartments. Unfurnished completely. But yeah. you know what? We had finally, we had a bench and a table made for us. Uh-huh. We found a bed. Uh-huh. We didn't take their fridge. We didn't have a fridge, right. even though it was the south of India and it was really hot. Wow. I have never been so. It was one of the happiest times of my life. Um, yeah, like. Or earlier, 
you mentioned there's something like uh, even sometimes there are signs here, but if our mind's too busy, then we might miss them. Mm-hmm. And which reminds me of this quote. It says, uh, silence is God's one and only language. Mm-hmm. And personally, mm-hmm. me, I have never been to India before too. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, I can close my eyes, almost imagine that India, obviously this part of India is extremely busy, but there's also a part of it that, for example, this village that you went to, it's just so different than the West then it just, there's just peace there, right? Or... Yeah, well, this is interesting. Yeah. Uh, or... You know that Ram Das says, <laughs> yeah. if we want to be, re- like, if we want to uh, achieve the highest spiritual mm-hmm. goal, mm-hmm. Uh, live in the city. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I think he says, like, oh, um, I can't live in New York because New York bring me down. That's how he used to think. Like, something like he that. He used no? to think that. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah. And yes, yeah. absolutely. I think the village, the village broke me in a, a really good way. Right, where I lived right, in right. India, yes, it was quiet, but it was so loud. In the okay. times of like every morning, the pressure cookers going off, people whacking. Okay, okay. India is full of sounds and smells, unless you're, and even if you're right. in the ashram, there's sounds and there's smells. Bombay and Delhi, the cities are intense. And yeah, what I love about India is it breaks you. It breaks. Mm-hmm everything to do with comfort, uh, your expectations. Right, right, right. I remember when I first arrived and we were driving through each village and I was saying, oh, the next one's going to be a bit more westernized. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, and I was very shocked when I first got there, but it broke me. In the first two weeks, right, I thought, I just right, want to go home. Right. Why have you brought me here? Right. And, and because they were independent from you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah, then... Yeah, yeah. And then I just, you know, I surrendered to the whole experience. And then I absolutely loved it. And we're down south where it's tropical. We didn't have a fridge, we didn't have ice. Right, right. We just got everything fresh every day. Wow, that's incredible. And to this day, I find it alarming, Mm -hmm. the comfort we live in in the West. I feel that it goes to a a point where it's very destructive to us. And even my kids... I still live in a, in a place that um, is not very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have heating. Uh, we, we live in a big open space, like a loft space. Mm-hmm. We sit on the floor to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we have lots of space, but right. what I, and we don't have everything that we would like to have. But it sounds like some people's house, they have a lot of stuff, but your home has a lot of love. I hope, yes, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. It hasn't got much light. I mean, I would love to have more light. Yeah. But what I mean is that, you know, two uh, two friends of my sons yeah. came into the house and they mm-hmm. were like, oh, this is like, because they were from India. And they were like, oh my God, this reminds us of that ashram where we stay in India. Oh, wow, <laughs> I was like, wow, wow, wow. So you see, yeah. it really, that really impacted me. And that my yeah. son didn't need anything except our love and our protection. Absolutely. And all I needed I mean, it was, was what we had there. And it was just it was just wonderful. And to this day now, if people complain about mosquitoes or there's no air conditioning, I'm yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Suck it up. Yeah. Or, or go live three weeks in India and then... then yeah, the it changes then. because the mosquitoes out there are insane. Fears, I mean, right. you have to close all the doors at eight o'clock. You're asleep, you know, by yeah. nine, but then you're up at five and it's amazing. Right, right, right. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. incredible. Um, this is a question personally I'm super curious yes. did you when you were there um, or your total time in India did you meet any saint where people have like I, powers where yeah. you know performing miracles or something I, poor, I mean that's why a lot of people go on the, <laughs> the, the trail don't they the real we spiritual to, seekers we all want Ram Dass's path yeah. right yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean he, he uh, had so it yeah. but he had it for a reason yeah um, and yes we did We uh, every oh. time we would go no Every time we go to India, we were looking for that. Uh-huh. But because we were looking for it, it's yeah. not exactly what we found. Exactly. We did have one, we went to one place where mm-hmm. we were told uh, he um, that he was a guru. Uh-huh. And I did this really crazy thing of being like, can I give you a hug? Yeah. And out there that, no, yeah, yeah, if he's yeah. suspicious, you you can't even touch. And I, uh-huh. Ollie, my partner said, wait, what are you saying? Yeah. And we had a meeting, but it was very quiet. He gave us a blessing. Um, but no, we, did you give him a hug? 
No, he didn't let me. But then you got the Hugging Mother. We went to Hugging Mother, uh-huh. um, but went to her in Barcelona. So no, in India, no. But I have experience with. So um, what happened with this guru? Then, then, the, then he he gave gave, gave uh, you guys a blessing. Then, and then, 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 then that's it. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't stay for for no, the no, no, no. Because and I he mean, he's throwing apple at people, like like Maharaji. No, 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 no. no, no. He, he was a very. It was like it was just very, uh, very quiet. I think. Us Westerners, we also build up this whole kind of fantasy and this, yeah, and this yeah, yeah, yeah. of what it is. But actually, when you probably and when you meet someone that actually is using their powers correctly uh-huh. and in alignment with God, uh, they're just like uh, any, anybody it, else. As normal as it's, yeah. it's like the it's like what I have yeah. uh, read. Um, perhaps, perhaps like what I've read in the beginning of like the master, he or she, um, because they want nothing for themselves, right? So people mm-hmm. can see. Um, and in a way, people like they'll have their projections into into this. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, what you just said made me reflect too, right? Because let's say if tomorrow I hop on a plane to go to India to find Guru, because I've read autobiography Yogi, or I heard <laughs> a story from Ramdas, right? And then I'll look, I'll have like a, a pattern, like this is is almost like I don't know, have a recipe, right? Oh, this is supposed to be the recipe for the Guru, and then that might let um some people that exactly miss um you know the guru because they're looking for something else yes and they would just like miss that message yeah you know? the, it's like the story you know it's the story yeah uh and i i spent time in germany with mother mira when i was pregnant mm-hmm. um she was uh yeah we would just get blessings every day yeah. um and we used to follow but we didn't I have um, a meeting with him, but uh, Swami Muktananda as okay. well, yeah, okay. um, and Shivalis Nanda, who was after. But um, it's very interesting that in Ramdas's one of his books as well, he talks about he had an experience uh, with Muktananda, mm-hmm. and Siddhi powers can be used in the right way and the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And generally, uh, and it's not to deny that they have them, but um, as you said. A real guru, we probably wouldn't meet, or we would meet in the street, or we'll give you just a book and change yeah. your life. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And, we're, yeah. and yeah. we're all, and I think we, it's, it's part of our past to realize the guru within us, you know? Absolutely. Because I, this year, yes. I'm very focused on um, being with that, with um, being with the gods within me and the master within me, you know? Yeah. 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 Absolutely beautiful. So you mentioned this year which is perfect opportunity to for me to myself want to ask and who knows probably a lot of people listen listeners who now live in barcelona will potentially want to move to barcelona that they might have this question as well tell us lucy we all know you've been extremely busy tell us about uh, your um um yoga teacher's training Wow. Okay, yeah. I'd love to talk about that. Okay, so yeah, because we've just had graduation of the uh-huh. of the twenty twenty four group. So the teacher training really has come from my own path of self discovery uh-huh. uh, and the transform discovering the transformative qualities of the of the yoga. So basically, the teacher training is a one year dedication. Mm-hmm. I feel that we have a duty now as yoga teachers and a responsibility to train teachers into the world that are of service mm-hmm. not just to other people but for themselves yeah being a yoga teacher is a big responsibility if you're going to be committed to it full-time or even part-time yes. so you have to do the work so my training is based on you doing the work mm-hmm. then of course in the 200 hours i give you all the information or all, all, all the teachings of the history of yoga but it's called the contemporary vinyasa why mm-hmm. Because we live in a contemporary culture, Absolutely. because we need to understand what the needs of the people right now. And as teachers, how do we need to teach for the needs of our culture and community? Yeah. And rather than just a focus on churning out um, teachers for studios, it's more like if you have a deep connection or want to develop your devotion to your practice and make changes in your life, you can take this journey with me. And even if it's just being able to share yoga with your family, your friends, Mm -hmm. and your community, or as one girl in my class works with refugees, her whole aim was to teach yoga for refugees, women refugees in particular, Mm -hmm. and women in abusive relationships. And actually, from this girl who's a graduate now, we are developing a project called Yomi Cuido. 
which is wow. I take care of myself. And one of my biggest passions has been or aims was to develop a, a charity project wow. because I myself have experience of addiction um, and I actually go to NA and AA and mm-hmm. Al-Anon meetings. Mm-hmm. So um, I want to develop my skills in teaching yoga for addiction recovery mm-hmm. and meditation. Um, she will work. I would also like to work with the women in that group as well. But our idea is to bring a collective of teachers together who want to offer their services for free in this in this way. So we're giving back to the community. So my wow. teacher training is also designed for you to discover what is your passion for teaching yoga and where maybe it's with children maybe it's with teenagers maybe you're more aligned with a yin practice but from mine you can then launch into a a, a yin uh, yeah. program yeah. um because the first 200 hours is to really discover who are you absolutely uh who are you in the sense of like who are you on this yoga journey and bringing your authenticity uh into your teaching so it's definitely um, a spiritual journey. Right. Well, actually, as one girl said, a human experience, which I yeah. love. Yeah. Um, and I focus very much on integral yoga, which is uh, the subtle anatomy, mm-hmm. which a lot of the time is missed on some of these quick teacher trainings. Mm-hmm. The yoga asana practice is only one drama of the Patanjali's eight limbs of yoga. Mm-hmm. And in the ancient yogis practiced asana because of the subtle anatomy not physically Mm. what's my body doing they didn't even think they didn't even highlight the importance of the physical anatomy it was about the internal journey Mm -hmm. the energy centers the energy bodies understanding who we are beyond the mind Mm -hmm. and another beautiful element of this training is that my dad it takes the meditation module Right. So we have a whole module on meditation and the power of the heart, the intelligence of the heart. And my dad teaches with me and it's really beautiful. Right. Um, I do a big uh, discovery on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Um, And my work is very much influenced by Carolyn Miss, the anatomy of the spirit. And I'm also developed a new system. So I have developed and through studying different um mythologies Mm -hmm. with this teacher training now we have nine modules but each module is one rama Mm -hmm. one branch sorry of Mm -hmm. patanjali's Mm -hmm. eight limb yoga system how about the the other one because there's eight and there's nine modules yeah the nine is the graduation yes okay and then As well as that, I have aligned Patanjali's eight limbs with each chakra, with the lessons of each chakra. So I'm bringing wow. two systems from Carolyn Miss, this anatomy of the spirit, Patanjali's, and I'm, I've am i seen the complete relationship. It's difficult if you don't know this, but teachers and people who study yoga will understand this because I want people to embody the yoga practice and the subtle anatomy. Right. Yeah. I mean, I could go yeah. on because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, you know, there's so much there. Perhaps we should have a special dedicated episode just for about, yeah. you know, the, your system, like yes. how, how you designed it you, and, and how you're envisioning it and, and, uh, and, and maybe even have some um, past alumni to come and share their stories oh, as well. Oh yeah, that, Cause, this cause, is fantastic. Because I was there last weekend and... Uh, um, to participate in the, one of the graduation day to the class de- yeah. demonstration. Yeah, the graduation classes. Yeah, graduation yeah. classes. They were indeed impo- like very empowering and also very powerful. Yeah, and and yeah. people have an idea. I don't. I don't just say, okay, this is the sequence. You learn it. You do it. This is. It's not about me. It's about mm-hmm. what makes sense to your body. Of course, it's an official sequence, but I really want you to teach what feels right to you and I will nurture you to develop that in the right way yeah. but basically as well now I'm developing the 100 hour program okay. which comes after the 200 hours this is in six months right. but we also have assisting as part of that and the 100 hours is for people who've done 200 hours but they need to bridge that gap between coming out of teacher training and then wanting to go into much more um 
focus on teaching how to develop your own method like i have my own style how do you develop your own style keeping true to the foundations of yoga and the service to the community deeper into the subtle anatomy working with neuroscience working with uh, a doctor um a neuroscientist doctor um Mm -hmm. And also going deeper into how we assist more advanced poses. So yeah, that's yeah. coming soon as well. That's Amazing. coming in September. Amazing. Because as I said, now that I've moved this program and I can see it, now I can feel as I've grown as well that I'm mm-hmm. ready to offer this 100 hour program. And we also will have a whole module on a how do we make self-discovery part mm-hmm. of our everyday life mm-hmm. and part of our journey as teachers because yeah. You will never stop doing that work. And if you stop yeah. the work, then there's obviously times of breathing. There's times of more intense yeah, work and not. Course. But our lives are this work. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I'm totally, I believe I'm butchering the quote here, but if there's something like it's you cannot um, teach or put it out there. That's something that you are not. Exactly. Right, like no, no. You even can fool yeah. some people, but but no, but, but, no, the, no. But, but the real ones, they they sense it right away. And... Yeah, and actually, at dance yeah. school, I learned this when I was doing choreography. Okay. I was like, the choreographer in their work, and if they also perform their work, they cannot lie. Yeah. yeah. What you are is seen. Yeah. Maybe not from a mind, but as you said, the people who are mm-hmm. awake will see. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not to divide people who are awake and people asleep. Yeah. But I think you understand what I mean. I Absolutely. mean, we're all just on this path constantly to yeah. Yeah. awake. <laughs> yeah, facts, facts. And talking about seeing, when you take a break here, because the signs about to come, that's a fun part of, of the f- flow, right? Just you know, go with the flow. So um, now we got some big questions okay. for Lucy. Lucy. Okay, I'm ready. Yes. Lucy, do you believe in God? <laughs> Is that really yeah, that's actually the question. <laughs> I wrote them down. Yes. 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 I mean, this week I had a very beautiful experience as well. I mean, some people, okay, God, higher power. I love the meetings because we they talk about higher power. Uh-huh. Uh, the NA meetings, we talk about the higher power, and I love that. Right. Um, and I'm very new to the meetings uh, because... It was because of my husband's death that I um, right. knew that I needed to go to these mi- meetings because he because of the way he died. But why I'm talking about those meetings is because in there, everybody is kind of... We see each other, you know, relatively new to the group, but there's always new people. So we're like strangers. <laughs> um, and you feel... To feel so much love and higher power in a room full of strangers was really poignant for me this week. And I also reflected on how everybody that I know who comes into my life at certain points, and this is what I love about working in the studio, because I've been working there for over like five years now. And like people come, people go, you turn up, you know, like people just pop up at the right times for your path and where you're moving. And I just see the expression of God in each one of you that I, I meet and in, and I feel so, so blessed. And, and a lot of time it's just gorgeous blessings. And then I've also seen the expression of God where people are suffering mm-hmm. or also in the man on the street that I pass every day. And, you know, when you start to really open up to everyone around you, everyone that you come in contact is an expression of God. This is very Absolutely. beautiful. And I, as I said, I'm very connected to Christ consciousness. I have my own connection with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's just how it is. But it's my own, it's my journey. Right. Um, I also, you know, yeah, I've had, there's Sai Baba. I love Sai, the connection with Sai Baba as well. But I also see, you see the wisdom and then you also see what, you also see that, you know, there's the humanness around it as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so yes, I believe in God. Do I love you, that question. Do you pray? Yeah, in I do. The, in the morning, in the night, or? or yes. Okay, nice. Yeah, and actually, I recently, more recently, I've been praying. I pray more. And I actually pray, I do it, you know, in class, because mm-hmm. I always felt that we need to use a language that people can connect to. Yeah. I feel that because of religion, 
we moved away from the sacredness of praying. Yeah. I mean, I love uh, the praying. It's because prayer is supposed to be allowing the person to be in communion with God versus just like mechanically repeating their desires. Yeah, and also doing it uh, because I should do it and doing it from mind. Mm -hmm. Prayer is actually an act of the heart. Yes. And it's an act of surrender. Right. And I pray, I take a prayer and call upon the wisdom Mm -hmm. because I do this every class because I don't chant the Indian mantras because they're not, I didn't grow up with those. So I don't have a heart connection. I'm developing one Mm -hmm. as I sing mantra and I have deep Mm -hmm. reverence. And sometimes I will use a mantra that I understand. Mm -hmm. But if I don't understand the Sanskrit, and a lot of people come to yoga class and they have no idea what the hell Absolutely. we're singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to scare them off right away, right? No, well, and, but it's also like, why can't we use our language? Yes. Why Absolutely. is our language not sacred? <laughs> and also, it doesn't matter what language exactly, you're using. Exactly. When you're coming from the heart, you will connect Absolutely. and you will be heard. And we are channels. So I specifically use prayer to get people out of their heads, to move into the heart, to open the session. And for me personally, to not make the class about me. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's about connecting to the divine power and being a channel and being of service. And I can be much more sensitive to the needs, the energy of the room. If I am in that surrender place for every morning in my meditation, I do a prayer where I surrender each thought, word, action, deed for the day Mm -hmm. and ask to be a channel of divine light and boom. Wow. And prayer is beautiful because it also, if you've, you know, like maybe you don't have time for an hour meditation in the morning. Mm-hmm. I've got, I'm a mother. So sometimes things and things happen in life. Yes. Like and it's day, really important the, to live. The water broke. Yeah. The water broke. My water jar broke. I was like, great. Uh, even though I reacted ridiculously. Um, but maybe I, it broke exactly today, this morning at that moment to remind you or to like, I wouldn't say teach, but it reminds you something like. Completely. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. It, it, and because also I've been talking about reacting, not responding. And my reaction, I broke this big jar of water <laughs> this morning just before I had to leave to go to class and I needed to be on time. And my poor son was sleeping at the back. And I just was like, no, oh, my God, no. And I really like, I shouted. And my poor son came running like, have you had an accident? And I was like, and he was like, mum. And he said, you know, super calm, grounded. He was like, mom, I will take care of that for you. Breathe. And he responded. And I was like, yeah. and we're in this time of eclipse. Yes. Uh, there's a lot going on. And I was like, beautiful. He was the response and I was the reaction. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be kind to myself. It happened. And I'd meditated before as well. And that's exactly where the uh, the cosmic joke comes in, right? Which is like, it's. The moment, like right after meditation, right, right after yeah, like, yeah. amazing yoga session, and then boom, something like triggers you exactly. And then to see, like, okay, cool, let's see if the universe can get you now. Yeah, like, and see, and, and, and then there's a sense of humor in that see, too. And it's also really good, like, oh, this is where I'm at today. Oh, thank you for showing me. Okay, so what do I need to do? I need to not look at my phone for a couple of hours. I need to. Yes. Be really quiet for a while. Yes, just maybe just do some sometimes, at least person for me, because I always have this like super high standard for myself. And um, sometimes I forget um, mm. that my humanness, there's sometimes just maybe just literally be in the couch, do nothing, listen to some records yeah. and just hang with some friends, go for a walk and there's some, just yeah. like do some human things. Totally. Or right. like, yeah. Or like go to nature. Yeah. Movies today is movies, a great, exactly. great idea. <laughs> just, <laughs> with the family. you know what? I love hanging out with my sons yeah. because my sons, they're like 16 and 22. And they, when we went to, we went, we were lucky enough to go to Nepal last year. And I was wow. like, wow. when we go on holiday, I'm not going to decide what we're doing you're going to, you're going to guide. And I said, you're going to show me the art of not doing. (laughs) Okay. okay. And I just followed their rhythm and they, that my sons are so chill. And I was like, it was so wonderful. Like learning the art of undoing and just my kids know how to just chill and be and enjoy life. Nice. They become the one who points the way. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, beautiful. It's, it's a joke you will understand later today. Oh, okay. Yes. They're the ones that point the way. The ones who point the way. <laughs> I will reflect on that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. This is there's another topic、mm-hmm. um, that also early when we we're chatting came up. Yeah.、Um, so there's this concept or there's a term. It's called spiritual materialism.、Mm. That was. By this、um, this teacher,、um, his name is Trumpa Rumpuche. Yeah, Rumpuche. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think nineteen seventy three, he mentioned in his book called "Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism,"、mm-hmm. and they essentially saying that on the path, sometimes that there's people get caught up, which means that they are they still do the practice, maybe they do the meditation, or they come to yoga class, but they are doing that not with a pure heart for. Doing the inner work or、um, for enlightenment, but they、mm-hmm. do that to for their own ego, which means、mm-hmm. that to seem holy, to、mm-hmm. seem that、uh, mm-hmm. to for for the power. And I think similarly, Ram Dass had this term called "golden chain of righteousness,"、oh. which is this, <laughs> which is this like, oh, I'm so holy, other people are not. These kind of、yeah. so、um, I realize sometimes I ca- myself caught up into that because of. Because I think it's my ego, right? Because my ego told myself that, oh, you have read this, all these books, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know all these quotes,、um, and I realized that、um, I think this is one of the issue that in the spiritual community as well, which I have not heard many people talk about that. What's、mm. What's your take on that? Yeah, it's it's a big one, and thank you for your honesty and your and like and、uh, admitting to it, because I think all of us are. I notice my. Spiritual righteousness, or I would I would say at moments I re- re- recognize my oh I've done all this so this inner work right, and then I go oh fuck, I've got so much so much to do and like I don't know anything, um and yeah、uh, yeah it's 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 a it's 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 a thing, but it's also a thing that I we should not also give too much attention to.、Mm-hmm. I think we need to understand it in the sense of. You know,、uh, I think when we're not being in, but then also like being in service. I have a friend who's like, I don't want to be righteous about being in service, and I was like, yeah, you know, like it, because the ego just likes to hold on、yes. to anything, and that's why, like for example, this morning when I broke the the vase and I and I had this reaction, and I was like, I'm going to talk about this in class. I didn't plan to talk about it at the beginning. I thought, no, I'm really going to share just the like the the humanness and that.、Um, I think the most important thing is to be aware of that.、Mm-hmm. I'm trying to because I'm trying to. I know there's、um, there's many teachers who talk about yes, it. Yes. Yes.、Um, and I think I think that's one of our responsibilities、yes. when we get onto the path is to keep that in check. Absolutely.、Mm. Because for me, it's almost like a it's almost like a, a veil and、um, or 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 it's more like a test, right? Because it's like Because, for example, the path is supposed to be like this, and then, then the ego trick tricks you to be like, oh, actually, maybe it's like this way, and this is where、yeah. become like feeding. It's actually, it's like almost ego's self defensive mechanism, right? Because it's like, okay, because supposedly the more advanced in a spiritual way, that kind of like in relatively less ego, but in this way that it actually feeds the ego because like, oh, I'm the most, you know, I don't know. Proper dress in a yoga class, or I'm the most ho- ho- holy person. You know, these are not my thoughts. No, you know, no, but, no. But just, you know, the cool dress maybe. But, yeah, cool、uh, dress. Yeah, you can see that. But yeah, <laughs>、uh, um, yeah. But yeah. I, I think that's like a detour where I should kind of、uh, hinder our our progress and and.、Uh, yeah, I, but I think it's also very impo- important to go through、yeah. and understand. But it's generally us also when we're coming from our minds and not our hearts.、Mm-hmm. Um, and the mind is very, very tricky, and we get involved. But it's not also to push the mind away. It's to Ram Das gives a really good example of that when he goes to a lecture and they don't have the right speaker for him, and he watches、oh, yeah. himself behave badly about speaker,、exactly. and then he cracks、exactly. up about it. Yeah. And I think it's having a sense of humor about it, not taking it too seriously, not judging other people for it as well, which is also、mm-hmm. another thing that we do because we see in others、yeah. and we're like, but when I see it, then I have to go. Okay, so what's going on in me? And a lot of the time, that righteousness is coming from something、mm-hmm. that we haven't actually addressed within ourselves. Yes.、Um, because when we are 
and I really, uh, you know, like uh, I'm still I, waiting for this day where I can be like in that equanimity in my heart with everything and everyone around me. I think that's the ultimate. We've stopped talking about enlightenment, which is really great. But now we, we talked about transformation. Mm -hmm. For me, this year it's expansion, which I really like because mm -hmm. even, um, oh, what's, uh, there's, uh, you know, uh, what's the other word? Or mm. in, in a way that equanimity, it's could, I guess there are like many different words that describe the same thing, but that in a way that everlasting equanimity is like, is, is I guess is what everyone's looking after. Is this is samadhi? Is then is nirvana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, right? Well, I I believe it's when you're really like living from the heart and living from divine guidance, um, and it's it's very much based like what you said at the beginning about being yeah. being the both, being yeah. the both, yeah. but being not attached to either one because we can mm -hmm. get really attached as you know exactly. because that attachment to your holiness. I think it's the attachment it, to it, it. Exactly. It's so. Uh, it's the, I think Buddha says the um, attachment is the root of all suffering. And even mm. when we're attached, attached to what is good, what is holy, what is spiritual. And then that also creates the suffering because, yeah. Of, oh yeah, personally in the past, I used to be like, I have to meditate at 1 PM. Yes. And if I don't, yeah. and then I'll have like, uh, yeah, I was staying with the family. Everybody has a way for me to have lunch. <laughs> and if I don't, I'm like, and they'll get like so angry. <laughs> Because actually, yeah, uh, yeah, I think a lot, of, a lot yeah. of us have have have, have been there. So. Totally, but I, and I think that it's about when you can let go of all those rules mm -hmm. and conditions, and ultimately, it's being present all the time. Exactly, and praying, being in prayer, sort of like it's like your days are constant prayer. So it's just that I love that deep listening and loving presence. I use those uh, from Thich Nhat Han. Mm -hmm to really bring myself back. And when we're being aware of spiritual materialism, then we're out of our hearts. Mm -hmm. It's like, don't yeah. throw someone out of your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Never do, yeah, do, do what you want with the other person, but never throw them throw out of your heart, heart. and, and yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Oh, there, there she is. There she is being holy. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, be a bit more like, let's be kind about that, but let's see why, why are we not enough just here right now? Yes. So it's kind of like uh, the spiritual materialism is a really good check in to actually where am I where am I vibrate where am I right now because I'm obviously mm -hmm. not in my heart I'm in my head, mm -hmm. um, and it's part of the journey. So uh, my son gets a bit. My son is really good at being right about righteousness because he's grown up with this sort of spiritual awareness, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he gets a uh, a friend in his class. He's like, and he talks about all these things, but his actions aren't aligned. And I'm like, darling in judging as well mm -hmm. you are coming out of alignment of that and also like yeah. and also you can be angry about it but don't yeah. attach yourself just let that move through you my dad's really good at that yeah he's always sweetly reminding me lucy you know what's moving through you right now okay let's just just be with that but let's not attach to it you know it's yeah. really it's really wonderful that if we could teach the young people how to detach yeah i mean that's holy in itself Absolutely. That's <laughs> that's the um, message of the Gita, right? It's like yogis are only entitled to their actions, never to the fruit of their actions. Mm. And uh, mm. that's lovely. Yeah. See, the books are great, but then you have to go out there and do the real work. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that marks a lot of difference because I know that those moments of like things being imperfect, being in relationships. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Every day it's beautiful and holy when relationships going great, but it's those moments that during the relationship then needs the tough conversation. That's where actually again like the quotes from 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 the Dao, right? It's like those moments that needed tough conversation or confronting of each other's mm -hmm. fear are those are exactly the moments how the relationships become stronger. Exactly, and it all goes back to one of my pillars: the suffering yeah. into grace. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's it. I mean, whole Ooh. relationships and everything, and that yeah, is a yeah, whole yeah. topic as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. 
person can't. We always have beautiful conversations, Daisy. I love it. It's my and you and I love these conversations because, and I love listening to them. I mean, I love recording this because it's also like, oh my god, the amount of time I listen to all these podcasts now and yeah. what I get from them, and it puts me in the right frame of mind for the day. Indeed. Um, and it's, and I'm just learning so much just sitting here. Converse and listening to you it's lovely thank you yeah yes, for sure it's my pleasure i'm gonna wrap it up with this question okay so unfortunately assume now is the end of the world okay okay so everything that you have Oof. written you have put it out there on the internet the website mm. newsletter unfortunately they're gone and the okay. content right yeah, and yeah. you only have like a tiny piece of paper like a sticky yeah, note yeah. to write on there yeah and then this is going to be like how to say the people who come after the generations come uh, after is, is going to see this little piece of paper of sticky notes written oh by lucy God, my question and you have a pen and a paper a little sticky notes what what are you going to write on the stick, sticky notes? oh my god that's like what oh my what, <laughs> what a question wow yeah you just yeah okay <laughs> I need to take a moment here, but then I yeah. shouldn't. I should just no, let take, my intuition, no. take, intuition take, take, to take a good moment and to be. I mean, I, uh, you know, I didn't choose be your magic because it it sounds cool. A magic with a K. Mm -hmm. I did choose it for a very specific reason: is that um, we are on this earth to live our magic. So, mm -hmm. and our magic with a K is the alchemy that is the truth of what we are. Mm -hmm. and to embody that and to live um and i would say also um stop you right there that's too long it doesn't fit on, oh, the, on, on, the, on, on the sticky note well i mean technically yes if you are very small but but sorry i interrupted you right there. Okay, you're, I... you're, ex you're explaining like what does biomagic means to you yeah i so could, we... could you try to if if i'm, oh. I'm being i'm being like okay yeah go go pre yeah um how to say being like uh, hard ass now like Condense be your magic in one sentence. Mm. What does it mean? Ah. Mm. Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, now my mind's in the way. <laughs> it could be for the next episode. That could be something it we first be. talk about for the next episode as well. Mm. May forgiveness be your guide. May forgiveness be your guide. Mm. Yeah. Forgiveness is like huge. Yeah. There's, forgiveness is huge. Forgiveness yeah. is an act of the heart. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow, there's, there's so many elements from that quote. Yeah, that, may forgiveness be your guide. Yeah, yeah. That 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 is a message. It's a nice one, Amazing. isn't it? Amazing, yes. Amazing. Well, Lucy, thank you so much for your <laughs> thank time. You. Amazing. We dropped into silence there. That was lovely. Yeah. The higher power. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you, Daisy. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for giving your time to listen to our conversation. Thanks, thank you. I hope that we there will be more. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, the, the goal here is to, you know, thanks, Lucy's mm -hmm. precious time that we have a whole series or at least mini series yeah. about um talk about many things uh, the first the first thing we're going to talk about next time is to dive a little bit deeper into the may forgiveness be your guide what does oh, it mean beautiful i you know? love that and uh that great more, yeah the yoga teacher yoga teacher training more stories in india as well and uh yeah awesome Thank absolutely you. and then we'll drop all the socials mm -hmm. for lucy here as well and uh cool Beautiful. Nice. I wanted to ask you that earlier you were mentioning um, like um, surren su surrender. Mm -hmm. Do you um, have you heard of this song called Surrender by Manu Wang? No. You have not? No, no, no. I gotta play this. Check this out. Have we, have we stopped now? Yeah, we're still rolling. Check oh, this out. Mm. Oh, my legs. Yes. I need to stretch my legs. This one. Yeah, here we go. Krishna 
Surrender 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 Yeah. 